You're worthy of all glory, you're worthy of all honor, and you're worthy of all praise. Ah, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I decrease so that you may increase, Lord. Have your way in this place and in me. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, I give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So last week we were talking about a right spirit. And we'll continue with that same area. So a uh, quick recap. recap. Um, God desires to renew a right spirit within our heart, within the heart and soul of those who are dead in sin and at enmity with him. Right? Uh, he is close to those who are crushed in the spirit. We read that. Right. He, uh, the Lord is gracious just as he is holy and he is the one that renews the inner man and refreshes the fainting soul. He is the one that renews the inner man and refreshing the fainting soul. Right, He's drawn to a broken and contrite heart, spirit, so that he can renew it. David said it in Psalm 51. So that's, uh, as I would say, the total recall. So I say that scripture is the total recall. So today we start out um, in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. That's going to be our starting point today. And this will be part two of a right spirit. Uh, saved, sealed, and sanctified. Saved, sealed, and sanctified. Saved, sealed. Triple S. You heard of Triple X, the movie with, with Van Diesel. Wasn't it Van Diesel? Triple X, yeah. This Triple S. Saved, sealed, and sanctified. The right spirit. In Ephesians 1? Yeah. All right. So let's read from uh, starting. Uh, let's start in verse 10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own that we should be that we should be to the praise that we should be y'all see this mm -hmm. that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ in whom ye are also trusted after ye have heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation you know, also after that he believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Right? Which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Y'all catch all of that? It says, it says that we should be to the praise of his glory. That we should be to the praise of his glory. That we first trusted in Christ. Then it's him whom you also trusted after you have heard the word of truth, which is the gospel. Of, they don't say which is the gospel, but it says the gospel of your salvation. Right? And whom also that after ye believe. So you, 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 you're supposed to be a praise to his glory. We're supposed to be trusting in, in him and hearing the word of truth and receiving the gospel of our salvation and then we're supposed to believe it and then we're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Turn to Ephesians 4. Sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. But everything's about him. That's why we got to have the right spirit. 
right? You're in Ephesians 4. It's just two pages over. So you ain't got to go that far. So look, you're sealed. It's all to his glory. We believe. We heard. We trusted. Right? And then we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, right? And then right here, after we got all of that right there, that saves us, we just read about salvation. That seals us, we just heard that. And now we're going to see why we need the sanctification part. And then we're going to be running. We're going to be rolling. The sanctification part is this. Let, 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 in verse 28. Let, no, 27. No, 26. No, 25. It's 24. Like, just read the whole thing. <laughs> but if I keep the verse I want to get to is 29. But I, I need to, we need to get a prelude, right? For the sanctification. That ye, verse 22. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. The old man. What man? The old man. Right? The old man. You know, y'all ladies be talking about my old man. Yeah, your old man who? You talk about that dude, but we trying to get rid of the old man. Yeah. Your old nature. I didn't say you said it. You better not say it. I ain't old. <laughs> but I'm just saying. You know, people be saying that. My old man, ladies be saying that. Their old man is at home. Don't be talking about their old man, right? But it says that you put off the, the conflict, that you put off concerning. Hold on. Let, let's, let's read the scripture for what it says. It says that she put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. It says that you put off the concerns of the old man and the old conversation, the former conversation, the old man. I ain't concerned with that dude. But so many people are concerned with that dude. Right? I go to church now. I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm living right. I'm trying, I look, I'm trying to live right for the Lord. Put off the concerns of the old man in the former conversations, which is corrupt. Why you put it off? Because it's corrupt. According to the deceitful lust. And be renewed where? In the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. I remember I was, I was actually, uh, just a quick side note real quick. We will come back right there. Right there, 26, 25, 26. But a side note, I, was, I, was, I went back and I was uh, watching one of the previous services from earlier this year, which was actually the residual effect. And when, when I was when I was thinking about or talking about this in that particular uh, uh, the residual effect, I believe it was yeah part three. You get a chance, go. It, 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 it'll it's scheduled to be released, <laughs> but you know you can check it out or you can grab the CD or whatever, right? But the residual effect. In, in, in a, I had used Steve as a person or one of the people. You know, I was talking about, I was talking to Sincere too. I was talking to Nate. You know, I was just looking at it. I was like, no, like, like when I look at this, it says, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. When I was watching that, uh, looking at that, it, it was talking about how our, uh, Nature. What's going on? Okay. It changed on my phone. It's fine. Oh. Yeah. So our nature, I was saying, you know, a person's talking to you, and then you're doing something. The old man. I'm, you know, I'm trying to bring it to this scripture. You were doing something as the old man or your old nature rolls up, you know, the filth, flying and flying and filth and attitude and all of that, right? And see, the person that, 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 you, that you was reacting to, they got away from saying it was just you. 
And what they were saying was, is that how y'all Christians act? So you say, that's how you act as a Christian. No, it says that that's how y'all. So your actions and your reactions actually play a part in affecting how somebody view all of us. That's what I was saying then, to use it. So when I read this, it made me think about that when it says, and speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. It made me think that we are members one of another. So how they look at you would determine how they look at all of us. So if you tripping and, and, and acting a fool, and they said, oh, that's how y'all, that's how y'all act over there at Merchant Ministries? Oh no. That's why I had to tell some people, mm -mm, mm -mm. take that, take that off the front plate. For real. No, 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 say no. Mm -mm. Don't claim this church is your church because then they're saying they're thinking that we condoning what you're doing and we're not. You feel me? So, no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. That's that's not you know, if this is your home, come home so you can be sent to the room on punishment to get your act right. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Okay, so let's keep going. That was just a side note. Be ye angry and sin not. See? Then they get upset, but don't sin. So I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a human being. You're a human. I mean, I, 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 people will probably have something to say about this when they finally view it or check it out. So just get the whole thing with the whole context of what I'm saying. You think Jesus wasn't upset or angry when he was turning the tables over in the, in the temple? I mean, come on. How, how does this look at this? Think about this. Right? Jesus talking to, to the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, and he says, You brood of vipers. That don't even sound like you would say something like that that way, right? I mean, it would be, I mean I'm just using my, my spiritual imagination. I mean, you brood of vipers, like with some with some righteous indignation with it. I mean, I ain't saying that's how he said it, but I'm, I'm just using my imagination. That don't, I mean, you just sitting there. I mean, Jesus was calm, cool, and collected. So, I mean, he could have very well said it like that. I'm just saying, I see him turning over the tables, expressing himself, ex letting them know this is unacceptable and this will not be happening and that this really aggravates me. You feel me? <laughs> so that's why I say that, you know. But it says, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that steal, that stole, steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that need it. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Wait a minute. Ain't lying? Don't we think lying is corrupt? Why he put lying with this? He said, wherefore put away lying? Speak every man truth to his neighbor. But right here he said, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby what ye are sealed until unto the day of redemption. Right? Turn to Acts. Nope, not yet. Turn to First Corinthians. Second Corinthians, sorry. Second Corinthians chapter one. Right? Verse one. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 21. My bad. I'm reading too fast. Flipping pages and reading my notes too fast. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians 1. Now he who established us, established it. He established, he established it. Us with you in Christ and had anointed us is God, who have also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Sounds like the re renewed of the Spirit of your mind, right? 
Salvation came when Jesus died in our place. But sanctification comes when we let Jesus live in our place. <laughs> you want to hear it again? Because I was blown away when, when, when I heard it from the Lord too. <laughs> I said, what? I said, Jesus. He said, exactly. Salvation came when Jesus died in our place. But sanctification comes when he when we let Jesus live in our place. Yeah, yeah hear me. Yeah. He died in our place. But salvation, sanctification comes when we allow him to live in our place. Hallelujah. Right. And, 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 and as long as a person is striving, they're not surrendered to allow him to, if you're striving, you're working, you're working, you're working. I understand he says we work and we do the things of God. We do those things that are good. We say those things that are good. I get that. But if you're striving to pretend like you're surrendered, you're not really surrendered. You're striving, you're working. I'm trying to surrender. Why are you trying? Just surrender. You don't find a criminal that gets stopped by the cops, right? Then he's he, he, he's not saying, I'm trying to surrender. No, he either surrenders or he don't. Right? A person, uh, 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 what is that? Uh, you had a couple of them. You had um, uh, the fugitive. Remember that movie with Harrison Ford? And then uh, uh, um, what's the name made one similar to that? Uh, Wesley Snipes. Right? But they were both fugitives. They wasn't, they was on the run. They were striving to get away. Ultimately, they were listen, hold, oh, hold, oh, glory. They was working to prove themselves innocent. Y'all hear me, hear me when I'm saying that. They're working to prove themselves innocent. We don't have to work to prove ourselves. Christ already did it all. So we ain't striving to surrender. We just surrender. We don't strive to surrender. We just surrender. Just give in. Just give up. Wave the flag. Throw in the towel. Just give up. Just give in. Hallelujah. Because a lot of people have come to replace surrender with striving. Striving produces the work of the flesh. <laughs> surrender produces the work of the spirit. Because when you're striving, it's like, I mean, you know, it's almost like like you're trying so hard. You know, we be around people like that, especially we be in fellowships like that. Let's just be real. Let's just take off our clothes, be vulnerable with each other, not physically, not literally, but let's just be vulnerable and transparent with one another. When we see people that's trying and trying, they, they, look, 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 they want to serve. But they're doing it because they're striving to serve. They're not surrendering to serve. So then you see, you step back and, I mean, for those of us that are surrendering to serve, we stand back and look at the person that's striving to serve. I'm like, what are they doing? I mean, you look at it with almost like with some disgust, not with judgment, but with some disgust. Like now they know that is not gonna work over there. They know, fascinating. <laughs> you feel me, right? Because they're striving. You know, they're striving, and when a striving person does stuff to be seen, a surrendered person ain't even seen. And some people wondering, oh, who did that? That looks so good. Who did that? So let's not strive, just surrender. 
That helps with the sanctification. Right? And the only way, the only way that we can say that we're surrendered is if we're we're uh having intimacy with the Holy Spirit, a yielding with the Holy Spirit. Because the fruit of look, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, just man, this the Lord Jesus. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is like having kids. Unless you're intimate with the Holy Spirit, you're not going to produce joy. Unless you're intimate with the Holy Spirit, you're not going to produce love. Unless you're intimate with the Holy Spirit, you're not going to produce peace. Unless you're intimate with, the, you see what I'm saying? Because intimacy with, with man and a woman, not to be gross, not to be belligerent or nothing, but intimacy with a man and a woman that's fully capable of producing is going to be a result of kids. So we have intimacy with the Holy Spirit. It's going to be a result. It, it, it was predicated. Look, man, surrender is a foreplay. <laughs> Jesus, Lord. Serious. People got to surrender. They don't want to surrender because they want to have that way. And if they can't get that way, man, you know, it's a problem. But if you're striving, instead of surrendering, you can't strive to surrender. Just surrender. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. And Christian character will not be, look, Christian character will not be developed as a result of striving, but as a result of surrendering. So a person is saying, when you see somebody out of whack and their character's out of whack, it's because they're striving. But when they're surrendering, they, 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 it just automatic Christian character shows up. Mm -hmm. Things is going haywire. People bugging, tripping. The, the, the place is on fire. Everybody running wild. But the, but the Christian character says, okay. So everybody just running. But don't nobody know where they're going. So, Lord, what is the best way out? Everybody running that way. The Lord said, let's go straight. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Everybody running to the east. And God said, just, just go straight. Just go north. You'll be okay. But, you, but, but, but when a person don't have that type of Christian character, something happens, then that old man rises up. They put on the former conversation instead of putting off the former conversation that we just read. Right? It's like, man, and, and what they say, I mean, and you hear, you hear people say it. We have said it. Let's stop. Like I said, let's just be transparent and vulnerable. Man, they, 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 man, they just demand they push my buttons. That's the old man. You shouldn't have no buttons. All your buttons should be uh what is the word I need to use right there, Lord? Disabled. Yeah, <laughs> All your buttons should be disabled, not enabled. So when they push it, they're like, ain't nothing happening. Ain't nothing happening. Ain't nothing. Why he ain't tripping? Why he ain't going off? He used to. He used to. He's disabled. I put on a new man. I renewed my, I renewed the spirit of my mind. I understand that I'm saved, sealed, and sanctified. I'm operating in a right spirit, so I ain't got no time to snap, crackle, and pop. It's like serious. It, 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 it's possible. Man, I don't know how. I don't know how to not get angry. Why not? The Bible we just read it says be angry and sin not. But you allow your anger to cause you to want to put your hands on somebody, not to pray for them, but to pray on them. All right, let me say it again. You get angry and you want to put your hands on somebody, not to pray for them, P-A-P-R-A-Y, for them, but to P-R-E-Y, on them. It's 
Stop trying harder. Just start yielding to the spirit every day. I'm stubborn. I'm trying. I'm trying. No. It's, it's, a, it's a process. It's a process. I'm willing to go through the process. I'm willing to commit to the big. I'm going to tell you, man, one of the things is just being real. One of the things, man, that, that we prayed about. Come on, man, that's about this. The people that are committed, willing to learn, willing to grow, and willing to go on the journey with us. If not, I already told you, in the beginning of December, the separation's happening. It's okay, because some things got to be moved for new things to occur. You put away the former conversation, the old man, and be renewed in the spirit. That's saying, some things got to go so some things can come. And, you know, it ain't all about nickels and noses. I've been saying that for the longest. It ain't. Some people live by nickels and noses. We just want people to be obedient to God, love God, serve God with, with, with total surrender, not striving. Because as long as a person is striving, it's hard to surrender. And surrendering is just humbling ourselves, yielding ourselves, submitting ourselves. Well, I'll submit to God, but I ain't submitting to man. Well, God was man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> then John 1, in the beginning was God. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And then the Word became flesh and dwelt among us and became a man. So why, why would we think, well, you know, I mean, the whole thing was... I get it, man. You submit, and I and that was a, that was part of that same residual. Same thing was in that whole residual effect that I was watching. Where and you may remember this. See, I was like, no. If I get behind him and I'm pushing him, and then he like, no, I need to push him. And then next thing you know, it's a result revolving circle. We're pushing each other. We're moving. That's all that. That's all submission is saying. It's like you come up here to preach. I'm sitting down. Yes, I am the pastor of the church. Yes, she is the pastor of the church. But it's like, no, we, we submit and we are receiving the word right now. Let's see, people understand submission works both ways. They just look at it as, no, I ain't submitting to you. Okay, well, nobody will never submit to you neither. You wonder why it ain't working out with her? Tell my wife that is. The one that's watching. Not nobody in here, so nobody in here get mad. But the person that's watching this later. You wonder why it ain't working with her? Or why, why she ain't submitting to you? Because you ain't submitting to God. Because once the person submits to God, God will show them how to function, operate, and flow, and surrender instead of striving. And then now it's like, oh, well, give them wisdom, give them knowledge, give them understanding, give them insight, give them direction, give them authentic and genuine love. Doesn't, doesn't the Bible say love your wife like Christ loved the church and gave himself? But that submission, man, it's hard. But you have to yield to the Holy Spirit in the various areas of our character where we're weak and where we're constantly failing. Where a person constantly fails and where a person is constantly weak at, that's the area the Holy Spirit is trying to get a hold of. But that's the area they're trying to tuck away in their pocket and think they hide. And he's like, how do you operate in the right spirit? How are you going to be saved, sealed, and sanctified when you don't even... <laughs> Let, me patch Let me patch it down. Let me patch it down. Let him go in your pockets. Seriously. I remember, man, I would go to, I would go to the prisons. And, and you go through the, you go through the metal thing. i make sure my money don't fall out. But they say, pull your pockets out. You got to walk through like this. 
That's what the Holy Spirit said. Pull your pockets out. I want everything in your pockets out. Don't try to put nothing in your pockets. Don't try to hide nothing. Because usually when you put something in your pockets, because you're trying to keep it secure. And out of sight of other people. You ain't gonna walk around with a ball, a, a handful of money, big bills, little bills, any bills. Just walk. You just walking around with it. Yeah, you know, put it in your pocket. Wait till first thing you say. First thing, I see I, I give any of the kids any money, or the kids with their mom or with their dad, or I give my grandkids money. I say I give it to them, I say put it in your pocket. Because I because if somebody else see it, they gonna try to take it. The Holy Spirit said, no, I want to see it so I can take it. So quit trying to conceal it. See, while you're trying to conceal, you ain't getting sealed. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I told y'all the year was going to be different. <laughs> some, some, some of y'all, I see some of y'all's faces. I'm looking at some of y'all's faces and they're like, is wrong with that dude? Yeah, I told you we was going somewhere. We doing something, and either you look, either you. It ain't even the old saying. You know the other say, old saying was, "You either roll with us or get rolled over." Remember that one? Remember that one? That was way back then. No, now it's like, no, we rolling, we going, we rolling, and it's like, okay, we we gonna do like this. That's that's the fast sound. Even though I can't really move real fast in this, in this area. We're going to slow down the coast a little bit because we don't want nobody to get left. But see, in the coasting, it's like, oh, I see. And we're rolling again. I mean, I, the Great Awakening is the reason. I was having a conversation today. And it said, yep, I see, I see what's happening, man. People, people, they said that. They said, and people are being awakened. It's like, man, that's, that's your vision. People are being awakened. It's like once people get awakened, they realize that, man, I ain't ate in a long time. They hunger and thirsty for the word of God. They, they, they meet, they, they, they've been in a, they meet, the word of God has been a famine. They seem like it's been a famine in their life because they ain't really been eating right. They're malnourished. But now they're like, man, I get it. The, the, the Holy Spirit is, is awakening those people. See, because you know, the, the, I heard this say years ago, a uh, great man of God, he said, uh, unless the Holy Spirit creates a landing pad on the heart of man, that man will never receive salvation. I was like, wow, that's heavy. That's good, though. But that, that landing pad ain't nothing, but they got convicted. So once they get convicted, now the Holy Spirit says, oh, landing pad. And now they can swoop in. But then that creates that hunger. See, because it just got awakened. And now it creates that hunger. And now their hunger is for the word, not the world. Before that landing pad was created, they were feeding and feasting on the world. And, and, and even, even, you know, you can look at current events, you see stuff getting shook up. And we ain't even halfway through January yet. It, it, it's real. But the awakening, hallelujah. Whenever the temptation create, presents itself for you to act out of character, at that moment is when you should say, Holy Spirit, I need help. Instead of saying, I know how to handle them. Because, mm -mm. I mean, not, not just the temptation to, 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 to do something physically sinful, but to do something or, or, or even think something that's not pleasing to God, or definitely not to say something that's not pleasing to God. You know, they still trying to push that button because today is disabled, you get up tomorrow, it's enabled. And, and usually the enemy know when that button's enabled. Because 
Whether he whether is is disabled or enabled, he ain't gonna stop. Turn to James one. Audible. It's audible. My boys made the playoffs, boy. <laughs> they, they better look out. They better look out. James 1, look at 12. It says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with, it, with evil, neither tempted he any man. So with, with all these people, with all these people that be like, man, God's tempting me. God, it, it, we just read it. Right? He said, let no man say when he is tempted, he's tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. So you know that evil is only coming because it's the devil. He's trying to push the buttons. Keep it disabled. Matter of fact, look, the only way to completely disable something is disconnect it. We just got to read in 1 Corinthians 1. He said, putting away the, all the things of the former man. Where Ephesians. Putting away all of the things of the former man. The old man. And then he went down the whole list. Disconnected. The number of your breach has been disconnected. <laughs> Seriously. They were trying to push they, they, took, they put, they, I mean, they hit the button. It, it, it's disconnected so much if you keep, you know, you, you get something that don't got no power source to it, that a button or whatever, and you keep, for instance, anything that got the battery, that that uh, that, that massage pillow thing I got. Man, that thing that had no batteries in it, ain't been used or nothing. So I'm pushing the button. You used to could hear it click. Like like it's, if the batteries was in there, you, you could hear it like it's about to come on. After years now, I'm pushing the thing. I'm like, it don't even click no more. So that's what I'm saying. Once it's disconnected, it, there, it hasn't been utilized for a long time, the button's just there. It's just on display. It's just it's a display now. <laughs> it's, it's useless. But see, we get to that point. I mean, and you know, I know, I know man, it's just... It's, 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 um, I might have even said it last week. I was like, man, you gotta just be careful. You just gotta care less. Well, how can you say you gotta care less? We the body of Christ, you're supposed to love people. Yeah. You're supposed to love people, that, but not allow the people to cause us to go crazy. Uh, and uh, Pastor Bow says, she said, man, love is an action word. I was watching residual effect number two. She said, love is an action word. And if we're not showing and acting in love, and we're just saying we love, we don't really love. Because love is an action word. I was like, dude, that's good stuff right there. <laughs> For real. You say you love me. I mean, and that's usually what people they say. Well, you say you love me, but you don't, you don't act like you love me. Act like. An action. Hallelujah. Mm. And, and the amazing thing is when, when, when that when that challenge to snap, crackle, and pop come, the Holy Spirit is already already yelling. No, first first he starts whispering because he, he's whispering. The Holy Spirit to bow. Holy Spirit to bow. Come in. Holy Spirit to bow. Holy Spirit to bow. Come in. Holy Spirit to bow. You know, you see how it gets louder? Because he already see what's coming. So he's trying to connect before it comes. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit to bow. Holy Spirit to bow. Come in. Holy Spirit to bow. Holy Spirit to bow. Come in. Lord, 
Jesus, I don't know if she got her radio receptors on or not, but I've been trying to reach out to her. Oh, okay, I'll try it that way. Bow down. This is the Holy Spirit. Listen. You see what I mean? <laughs> it's like he's trying to get our attention before it even happens. And then once it happens, because we wasn't listening, because he was trying to forewarn us, because aren't we foreordained? Aren't we predestined? We was just reading this stuff, y'all. All of that is before the destiny. All of that is before known. Forewarned. That was before the warning. And he's doing that. He's telling us that. He's initiating that. He's giving us the inside scoop. Now remember the inside job. He's giving us the scoop before the spoon gets to the ice cream. We get the scoop on it. It's like he, people be talking about they got the ear. People in the street be talking about they got the ear to the concrete. That's why they hear about it. No, the Holy Spirit is like, I'm going to let you know before it hits the concrete. Then he said, before those things happen, I'm going to show you why we can't believe that. I mean, there's so many things. You know, and, and I'm not, I get all glory to God. I say it like that. All glory to God. It's so many things that has transpired here. I tell my wife about it before it happens. And she'll be like, how you know that? I'll be like, Holy Spirit, let me know before. Seriously. Different things that happen with different people. Seriously. You know, excited. And it's like, the Holy Spirit be like, I'm getting excited. They, they just excited. But their excitement is going to burn out. I'd be like, why? Because they ain't really committed. They, they ain't really committed to me. So how can they be how can they be committed to you? I'd be like, man. That's why I pray. Lord, send people that are committed, that's willing to learn, that's willing to grow, and that want to go on this journey together. So I'm good. I told y'all my prayers. Y'all should be writing that down if you're part of the ministry and saying, that's my prayer for the ministry too. Lord, send people that are committed. Amen. So Pastor Valley, I do everything. Lord, send people that's willing to grow so they can help me get better. Lord, send people that's willing to learn because I need to learn some stuff too. And Lord, send people that's willing to go on this journey. Come on, we're going together. Because better is two than one. One could put a thousand in flight, two could put ten thousand. That multiplied. So if you put one can put a thousand in flight, two can put ten thousand in flight. Imagine how many go on a flight with three. The number is jumped by ten thousand. Well, nine thousand. It said one can put a thousand. Two, ten thousand. Three, you got to go from if it's ten thousand there, you're at man, twenty thousand, thirty thousand. God's the God of addition, multiplication, subtraction, and division. And he adds in the fractions. Seriously, he adds people to the church as it please him. He adds people to the body as it please him. Right? He multiplies our seed sown. This is this out of the word. Right? And he, he divides. That's the separation. He divides us from our sin. He separates us from our sin. He throws it into the sea of forgetfulness. So you don't even have a fraction of the thought about it. If you really seriously. Some things you some some parts of your some parts of our lives from from being saved, sealed, and sanctified. Some parts of our lives can't be shared because the person don't understand it, and then they gonna say, "Well, you used to." Well, you stuck on the used to. You try to use that against me. It's been twenty seven years, homie. What now? Well, you, I remember you did this and did that. Okay. 
I remember your wife said such and such. Okay. That's, it's, it's at the foot of the cross and some of the blood is burnt up at the altar. Now what? You need to get past it. How are you still bothered by something that I did that I repented for that you weren't even involved in? I don't understand it. Help me out, somebody. I did something. It bothered you. Right? I went and got forgiveness from Christ, pleaded the blood, and moved on with my walk with Christ stronger. From a baby up to a full grown man. How are you still on baby stuff? Talking baby talk. That's what happens. And people don't understand. It's like, hi, I used to talk about something that we did when we were 14. You think, you think I'm stuck on that? No, you the one that's stuck in time, not me. Every, every time, you've heard the story yourself a million times. Almost a million. Mm -hmm. At least 50. At least 50 times I heard the story. Are you serious? You still talking about that? That was in 1970 something. When we are saved, we are sealed. And that's when the process of becoming sanctified begins. Go on with your sanctified self, Steve. Go on with your sanctified self, Bob. Go on with your sanctified self, Kat. Go on with your sanctified self, Merging Ministry. Go on. That's because you're setting a standard. Some things just will not be allowed. Some conversations just won't take place. Some places we just won't go. And that would include some churches. Because not all churches, I'm just being real, man. And I ain't judging, I ain't don't. I understand the judge righteous. The Bible says that righteous judgment. Right? But some churches, it's just like, uh, it's just don't want to go there. I told, I told Pastor Ron, I said, look, let me go, I'm gonna go visit these 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 specified places before the new year come in because I don't know if I'm gonna go visit them no more. Not that they was bad, but it's like, no, because I'm 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 I'm, I'm mm. look. That's the difference between me and a lot of other people. I'm going to pray for you, I'm going to love you, I'm going to support you. And regardless, is if you pray for me, love me, or support me. Because that's not how Jesus operated. Jesus didn't say, if you serve me, then, then I'll bless you. I get that. that there are some prerequisites. But either he, you do this for me, I do. No, that's, that sounds like tick for tax type stuff. No. I'm going to love you regardless. I'm going to support you and I'm going to pray for you regardless. I'm going to support how the Lord tells me to support. Be that in words of encouragement, be that in finances, or be that in, in presence. But however the Lord tells me to support. A lot of that, I'm just being transparent and real with y'all. Sometimes those things I was just doing because I'm like, yeah, let me just go over there, man. On my own. Not all the, I'm just being real. Not all the time being led to go. For real. Not that it was bad. Because it wasn't a bad, it's not a bad church. It's, there's not bad, they are not bad churches. Let me put it like that. They are not bad churches. They're teaching the word of God. Just like some people say, they not led to be here. I mean, I don't know why not, but <laughs> but that's what they say. And the amazing thing is, Pastor Val have seen some in visions and dreams and unctions, and I have seen some in visions and dreams and unctions that are supposed to be here. 
but they are not led. I can't, I, I, I'm not your God. However, Holy Spirit, to the person that to be emerging ministries, it's a lot of names under there. Come in. Holy Spirit to the person that's supposed to be emerging ministries. Come in. Jesus, he then he goes to have that conversation. And then he's screaming at them. And see, and they thinking because they call and ask for suggestions, advice, or insight that that's okay. No, it's deeper than that. So but because just because I know, she know, we know, we see, we understand, we don't force it. <laughs> we ain't spiritual stalkers. <laughs> but and, and even with that, it's like, okay, so I don't want to force the relationship, but if you don't want the relationship, why are you asking me? Why are you asking me what I think? Why are you asking for my suggestion? So obviously, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I got wisdom, but you don't have submission. Oh, I got love for you and support for you, but you don't have humility. Oh, all right, I got it. I understand. I understand. I understand this is a one-sided relationship. You just want the benefits. But you know what? I told my wife. Because the Lord told me. So that's why I made the comment before. I don't know if I'm going to be going to visit them churches no more like that. I don't know if I'm going to be giving no people this advice and instructions like that. I, hey, what do you think you should do? Well, I don't know. That's why I was calling you. Talk to the Lord. Real. And don't, don't call talk about, well, uh, I just want you to be in agreement. Be in agreement for what? I want you to be in agreement. Be in agreement for what? Be in agreement with what God said you need to be doing. Let's see, let's see. This is our, this is Thursday night. It ain't even Sunday. <laughs> 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 no, what time is it, man? Like, mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, thank you. But that's what happens. We both experience it. Right? You're too good to come and sit under, but you don't have a problem calling accent. I think to me that's an issue. But I don't I don't look. I do what God say do. If he say offer, suggest, advise, I will. If he don't, I sit there like. Mm -hmm. Yep, I hear you. And, and you know what? I say, well, I'll just pray for you. And my, you know, I'm going to tell you, 75% of my prayer is this. Lord, show yourself alive. The other 25%, I'm waiting on him to tell me what to say. See, Lord, show yourself alive to Right. Turn to Acts four. All right, we we gonna try to. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to get close to wrapping this up. So we got I got a couple of things. We got we got to knock out real quick. Right after this. Acts four. Look at, look at, look at, look at, see, save, seal, and sanctify. That keeps you in harmony and unity and oneness. We start, we was talking about it the week of, the week leading up to New Year's, right? Being on one accord, saying the same things, speaking the same things. Look what happens. Look what happens. Acts 4, you there? Yes. Uh, 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled. Huh? 
when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. You go back and you look at verse 13, it said the people saw the, the, saw the boldness of Peter and John and they perceived, which means they knew that Peter and John had been with Jesus. And then we come to this. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled. They came together. Hebrews 10, 25, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. As a matter of some is like exhorting one another. You can't exhort nobody through the internet. Through word. Exhortation takes place. See, it's exiting me and, and exhorting you. All right, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And the multitude, look, look, look. And the multitude of them that believe were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they all had things in common. They, they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witnesses of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. See what happens when you come and we on one accord. We're saved, we're sealed, we're sanctified, we're saying the same thing, we're praying the same thing, the place is getting shook, people got people's pockets that are loaded, becomes unloaded, the Holy Spirit becomes uh, more uh, evident in people's lives, and people ain't thinking about themselves. They're thinking about the next person. I ain't trying to hurry up and get to my crock pot when your crock pot's empty. What's in your crock pot? Do you got something in your crock pot? Oh, you don't? Let's go get something to put in your crock pot. Well, I ain't got no money. I ain't asked you if you had anything to put in your, if you had any money to put something in your crock pot. I said, let's go get something, nigga. Let's go, me and you. Meaning I'm looking out for your, your interests. Now, will you look out for others' interests? Or will you, once you got your crock pot, because somebody else put something in your crock pot at one time or another, I'm using a crock pot as an example. Somebody put something in your crock pot at one time or another. Now there's another person, even though you may not have it all, but you've got just enough to put something in their crock pot, but you're going to withhold. We will not have things. We will not have all things common. You just want to get, 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 get. When will you get, 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 get? You can't say that there's a select few within this church. I told you this is different. There's a select few in this church that are willing to just give and not concerned about getting. But then if they get something, they're looking to try to get that away. But see, then there's, 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 a, there's a select group, too, that's just trying to hoard and become spiritual gluttons. See, we ain't even got to be talking about material. Or is the wisdom and the revelation and understanding and the spirit of God that you're getting, are you willing to give that away? Because it, it, he said right here, when they were all assembled, and we went to the, we go back to the, read all in chapter four, Peter and John were speaking with boldness, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is when they all came together. And once they all came together, everybody forgot themselves, and then they started look. First it was Jesus and getting Jesus. And then it was like, okay, we need to give Jesus to other people. So then when they gave Jesus to other people, everybody was like, oh, this stuff ain't ours, man. Let's go sell our house, man. Here, we're going to get to the church to expand the church. I ain't telling nobody to go sell their house. I'm just showing you what the Bible says. 
that they were willing to distribute the stuff that they had. Now, I do know somebody that utilized their house to get a church. No. Look, hallelujah. Let me say it clearly. I know somebody that utilized their house to get the church, but it wasn't the pastor. It was one of their members. But check it out. But then the member, by the grace, by the grace of God and by the goodness of God, reaped everything for their house and over. Because they just listened to God. It, Holy Spirit. To so whoever's supposed to be doing it for Mercy Ministries, come in. This the Holy Spirit reaching out to the person that's supposed to do this for Mercy Ministry, come in. Jesus, he said it's the same thing that happened. God already has the person set up that's going to give us a church. But we have to. Say, sanctify. Serious. God ain't gonna put us in a church if it's and, and, and we don't have people committed. Or people that's willing to learn, people that's willing to grow, people that's willing to grow, people that's willing to go on the journey. People, some people sitting here, and some people may be listening. You're like, when's the building coming? When you get in it. He that's faithful in little is faithful in much. Seriously. Say, like, man, but you've been saying we just gonna get yes. And I and I also been saying we feeding the homeless. Are you helping with that? I also been saying we're gonna go do missions. Are you helping with that? You see, but you're so concerned about the building. We can't even do what the disciples was doing was proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, helping those that are in need. And now we can consider the houses and the buildings. But until we do that, priorities is wrong. Hallelujah. <laughs> My brother said, you sure we have a church tonight? This is church. Right? The Holy Spirit's indwelling certifies that we belong to God. Once we are certified, we still have to be sanctified. Look, oh my gosh. Sanctification, they got two more points. Sanctification is a process we can't abort if we want all that God has for us and all that God promised. Sanctification is not a process that we can abort if we want all that God has desired for us and all that God has promised for us. And with the sanctification, that's just walking in the spirit. But you know what? Just because you get birthed, Ah, because if it was it was that, ooh, Jesus, a baby come out with legs, they ain't walking. Just because you got born again and you got the spirit in you, but that don't mean you're walking in the spirit. Let me say walking in the spirit. What's the whole reason? So you are not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. And the lust of the flesh is not just acting sinfully, it's acting selfishly. It's acting with an ulterior motive. It's striving. That's the, the striving is the flesh. <laughs> we ain't born walking, but that's part of the growing. That's part of the learning. That's part of the journey. Right? All believers receive the, the Holy Spirit at salvation when they commit themselves to the Lord. 
right? But not the filling of the Holy Spirit comes into the believer after they surrender. You can be born again, but not be filled with the Spirit. You can be born again. That's when the Holy Spirit come in. But he, remember, he accepted Jesus as Savior, but you haven't recognized him and accepted him as Lord. That's that part. Romans 8, and this is going to be the last one, y'all. Romans 8. We went a little bit behind it today, but it's okay. Romans 8. We like Romans 8, 28, right? And we know all things work together for the good and them that love the Lord to them who are called according to his purpose. We love that scripture right there. We love it. Right? But what about this? Verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by this spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and the children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be, that we may also glorify together. For I reckon, that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. He said, but if the spirit of him that raised up Christ dwells in you, that same spirit will quicken your mortal body, meaning it's going to get your flesh under control, meaning their sanctification process is going to happen. So it makes me even ask a question. Is that spirit in people? Or is it they still operating in them? Because we just read it. He said, it's that spirit in your spirit. We read that, right? Ah, Jesus. Right, right. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So if the spirit that dwells in, if the spirit that's in you is the same spirit that raised up Christ, that same spirit that dwells in you that raised up Christ, it's going to bear witness with your spirit that you are a child of God, that you are a son, daughter of God, that you are born of God. Which means, huh, man, I can't say that. I can't go there. Mm. See, that, that's that Lord part. Right? That's that Lord part. This is the Holy Spirit is saying, mm, sanctification. And what do you say, Lord? Sanctification. Huh? Sanctification. Huh? Sanctification. It ain't going to say it's okay. Well, it ain't drink wine. It ain't, ain't going to compromise and deteriorate and try to destroy the word of God. It ain't, ain't drink wine in the Bible. No, it ain't going to do that. It ain't going to, because see, now you're looking at that for a copy yeah. from the promise, <laughs> from a compromise, right? You're trying to come out from the promise. They ain't drink wine in the Bible. 
a little bit of wine. The Bible says strong drink is good, huh? Mm -hmm. Vinegar is strong too. Is that good? Because they put vinegar on, on the sponge and, and gave it to him. Mm. How about that one? Drink some vinegar if you want a strong drink. Put it on a sponge. Do like Jesus. You want to be like Jesus? You want to turn the water to wine? I don't want to drink no water, man. Well, the water hydrates you. The wine dehydrates you. Wait, I mean, in my BC days, I knew dehydration real good. Me and dehydration hung out every day. <laughs> All right, man, that's it for the night. Glory to God. Let, let the spirit that dwells in Christ dwell in us and quicken our mortal bodies. Right? And stop calling the Holy Spirit it. It's not it, it's him. He. He that dwelleth in me. Right? Jesus even described him as a he. He said, I'll leave you another comfort, and he will guide you. So why did you read somebody? It. It's all over me. It's it was all over you. It. It sounds like a movie. Monster. It don't have no descriptions. Right? What is it? Hallelujah. He is a person and he has power and he is a powerful person. <laughs> right? Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for tonight, Lord. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Uh, thank you for insight, revelation, understanding, wisdom, knowledge, all that flowing freely in our lives, Lord. We receive of your word. We apply your word to our lives in Jesus' name.